Welcome back students to the fourth part of chapter 3 Physiography and Drainage. So today we will learn about the drainage system of India. So before moving ahead let's understand the meaning of drainage. The term drainage describes the river system of an area Rivers in India are classified into two categories according to their source region that means where the river begins its journey. So the two categories are the peninsula or the Indian Plateau River and the Himalayan rivers also called as the North Indian rivers. The Himalayan rivers are further categorized into Ganga and its tributaries and Sindhu or the Indus River and its tributaries. Start with the Himalayan drainage. As the name suggests, these rivers originate from the glaciers in the great Himalayas or Himadris. So glaciers are nothing but ice rivers. As they come from high altitudes, they flow with high speed and have large and deep courses. In thus, Ganges and Brahmaputra along with their respective tributaries are the main Himalayan rivers. The rivers Ganga and Yamuna originate from the Gangotri and the Yamunotri glaciers respectively. They are fed both by rain during monsoon season and by the melting snow from the Himalayas in summer. Since there is plenty of water throughout the year, because of the rains and the melting snow, such rivers are called perennial rivers. So we'll study the Sindhu River system or the Indus River system. The Indus River rises in Tibet near Manasarovar Lake. Flowing westward, it enters India in Ladakh. It flows through the states of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, and Punjab in India, then enters Pakistan and flowing further south reaches the Arabian Sea. The major tributaries of the Sindhu River or the Indus River are Ravi, Chenab, Satlij, Jhelum, and Bees. They almost flow parallel to each other and drain the western Himalayas. Satlij being the largest and the major tributaries of the Sindhu River or the Indus River originates near Mansarovar and also flows westwards. Thus, Punjab means the land of five rivers. It is compound of the words Panj means five and Ab means water. So it refers to the rivers Jhelum, Chinab, Ravi, Bez and Satlij. We now move on to Ganga and its tributaries. The river Ganga originates in the Gangotri Glacier. So this is the Gangotri Glacier as Bhagirathi and when joined with the Alaknanda River, it joins with the Alaknanda, Alaknanda River at Devprayag. It turns into Ganga. The Ganga River enters the plains of Haridwar and from there it flows eastwards, enlarged by the tributaries joining from the left and the right. The river divides in West Bengal and the distributary Hooghly. It moves, flows southward to reach the Bay of Bengal, wherein the main tributary of the river Ganga enters Bra enters Bangladesh as the Padma River. The Yamuna River, this is the source of Yamuna River which is uh, Yamunotri, okay, joins the Ganga River at Allahabad as a right bank tributary. Ghagra, Gandak and Kosi arising from Nepal Himalayas join as left bank tributaries to the river Ganga. Chambal, Betwa, and Son from Peninsula or the Indian Plateau join as the right bank tributaries to the Ganga River. Some of 
Putra is another tributary of the river Ganga. When it flows through Tibet, so this is Tibet, it is called Sangpo. And when it crosses the Himalayas, it is called Dihang. And when it flows eastwards in Assam, it is called Brahmaputra. So the source of the river, it originates in Tibet to the east of Mansarovar Lake. So this is the Mansarovar Lake and it originates to the from the east. The course of the river, that is how it flows. The Brahmaputra River mostly flows outside India. So this is the border of India and it mostly flows outside India. From the point of its origin and in the middle course enters Arunachal Pradesh as Dehang and later into Assam, okay, it enters as Brahmaputra. Then it flows eastwards and then takes a sharp turn southwards it flows into Bangladesh as Jamuna River and then it joins the distributary or the Ganges River which is called Padma River in Bangladesh. So it joins with the Padma or the Ganga River and then it merges and from here it flows as Meghna River before emptying into the Bay of Bengal. We will now study the second category of rivers, the peninsular rivers. The peninsular rivers is divided into two categories, the west flowing rivers and the east flowing rivers. The west flowing rivers drain into the Arabian Sea. So this is the Arabian Sea and the east flowing rivers drain into the Bay of Bengal. So this is the east and this is the west. The western ghats act as a water divide between the east and the west flowing rivers. So if you see here, the western ghats, this is the western ghat, it acts as a water divide between the east and the west flowing rivers. We'll now move on to the west flowing rivers. The west flowing rivers are rain fed rivers and hence most of them are seasonal in nature and seldom cause floods. They are short, swift flowing rivers. Rivers Narmada, Narmada, Tapi, Sabarmati, Mahi and Luni flow into the Arabian Sea. So this is the Arabian Sea. We'll move on to the Narmada River. The Narmada River originates in Amarkanthak of Madhya Pradesh, flows through the rift valley between the Satpuda range. So here we have the Satpuda range and the Vindhya range and empties itself into the Gulf of Khambat near Baruch in Gujarat. So this is the Gulf of Khambat. I will move on to the Tapi River. The Tapi River is another west flowing river. It originates in the Multai Hills of Madhya Pradesh. Even this originates in Madhya Pradesh. Flows south of the Satpuda range. So we already know this is the Satpura range. So the Tapi River flows south of the Satpuda, Satpura, uh, Satpuda range and drains into the Arabian Sea near Surat. So this is Surat and it drains into the Arabian Sea. Then we have the Sabarmati River. The Sabarmati River originates in the Aravali here. Originates, this is the Aravali range. Here, if you see, we see the Aravali range. So the Sabarmati River originates in the Aravali range of the Udaipur district of Rajasthan and meets the Gulf of Khambat and then enters the Arabian Sea. We'll see the river Mahi. The river Mahi rises in the Vindhya range. Okay, we know this is the Vindhya range. It rises in the western Vindhya range, flows northwards through Madhya Pradesh state, turning northwest. So it turns northwest here. It enters Rajasthan state and then turns southwest 
to flow through Gujarat. It flows through Gujarat state and then empties into the Gulf of Khambat. Clear? And we'll move on to the river Luni. The river Luni originates along the western slope. So this is the Aravali range. This is the Aravali range. So it originates from the western slopes of the Aravali range, flows in the northwest. So it flows in the northwest. So this is the northwest and then southwest direction. So this is the northwest direction. This is the northwest direction and then it flows into the southwest direction. This is the direction into the run of Kutch and then into Gulf of Kutch. We will now move on to the east flowing rivers. So we have already studied that in the Indian plateau, the land is tilted or sloped from west to east though. So the land is tilted or sloped from west to east. Hence, most of the rivers originate in the western ghats. So they originate in the western ghats. We see the Godavari, the Bhima, the Krishna, all these rivers, they originate from the western ghats and flow eastwards towards the Bay of Bengal. The important river systems of this group are Mahanadi. So we have the Mahanadi River here, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri. Mahanadi occupies the northeastern part of the peninsula. So if you see this is the Mahanadi River and it occupies the northeastern part of the peninsula. So this is the peninsula. So this is the northern and the eastern part of the Indian plateau or the peninsula. The Godavari, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri in the eastern slope, they originate from the eastern slopes of the western Ghats. So we'll move on to the Godavari river. The Godavari River, it is the second largest river system of India in terms of catchment area. It originates at Trimbakeshwar. So this is Trimbakeshwar in Nashik. This is Trimbakeshwar. So it originates in the Western Ghats, the eastern sides of the Western Ghats. So here we have the Trimbakeshwar in Nashik in the Sayadri. River Pranahita, so if you remember the physical division when I showed you, the river Pranahita is the only river which flows southward in the peninsula region. So river Pranahita and Indravati are some of its major tributaries. So this is the flow of the Godavari River. We have the Krishna River. It originates in Mahableshwar in Sayadris. So it originates in Mahableshwar in the Sayadris. And then it flows in this direction. The major tributaries are River Bhima and Tungabhadra. And again it flows eastwards into the Bay of Bengal. <coughs> Sorry. Then we have the River Kaveri. It is the main river of South India. It starts in the Brahmagiri Hills in Karnataka. So here is the river Kaveri. It starts in the Brahmagiri Hills in Karnataka. And here it flows through Tamil Nadu and into the Bay of Bengal. Then we have the river Mahanade. It has its source, see if you see here, it has its source in the Bastar Hills of Chhattisgarh and it flows east through Orissa and enters the Bay of Bengal in the forming a vast delta. So it forms a vast, a big delta here. We now come to the last part of this session. The coastal rivers in Kerala have long extending backwaters near their mouths. These water bodies are known as kayals. Now what do we mean by backwaters? Backwater means the water that is held back by a dam or 
any other obstruction. With this, we have come to an end of our today's session. I know you have understood. Thank you. Stay home. Stay safe.